Hello, everybody. Human beings, we are born with an amazing biology. I mean, we can learn enormous amounts of data. We can navigate in complex social situations, and we live longer and longer. But we're also born with a biology that has limitations. I mean, I don't run as fast as I used to, and sometimes my eyes need a little assistance. But in one area, we tend to ignore the biology that we're born with, and that's when it comes to reproduction. Despite with we living longer and longer, the time in our life where we can have children have not changed 10 minutes. We need to take the decision of having a family at the same time as our parents, our grandparents, and great-grandparents. And when we ignore this, and if we ignore our reproduction, it will often result in diseases. If we look at what diseases that we get when we are in our reproductive age, we don't get heart attacks, we don't get cancer, we don't get diabetes. Some of us get some asthma, some of us get some mental disorders, but it's by far reproductive diseases that hit us during that part of our life. Can I ask you, how many of you in this room today have children? And all your parents, how many of you would agree with me when I say having children is the most important thing that happened in our lives? Well, you're not alone. This is what parents feel is the most important thing that happened in our life. So what we are talking about today is to most people the most important thing that you'll ever experience. But having children have changed over time. The number of children born in the world has stopped growing a long time ago. In average, women in the world have 2.4 children. And when we talk about children, I mean different generations have different reproductive challenges. My grandmother's generation. If, they, if a woman at that time became pregnant outside marriage, the answer was an illegal abortion. Because getting pregnant outside marriage meant that you were jeopardizing your chance of an education, your chance of a job, and your chance of being married. It was serious. My mother's generation suddenly gained control over their reproduction. They had access to contraception. And suddenly you could separate having sex from having children. But looking at their mothers, the mantra of that time was, a woman should have education, and a woman should have a job, and a woman should earn her own money to be independent financially of men. Their children, my sister's generations, and, and after that, have done this. Women, more women than men, get long educations now. They want jobs that's very important. They want a career, as we call it. And then you need to find a partner to have children with. Too many then need to go to a hospital to have your children. So how do we counsel our children? Very often, we counsel our children based on what was relevant and important for our own generation. But it's very important to recognize that things change. I have two children, Sarah, 24, and Adam, 28. There is 20% risk that Adam will never become a father. 20% of men in this country never have children. There's a 10% risk that Sarah will have either no children or fewer children 
than she tried to have. 10% of all women in Denmark don't have the number of children that they are trying to have. And there's a 10% risk that my grandchildren need to be conceived at a fertility clinic. This is way too much. Parents in this room, there's a 40% risk that our sons will have a sperm quality so low that it at least will take them longer to make a woman pregnant. And you guys, all the men in this, in this room, I mean, you're awfully absent in the debates when we talk about these things. The patient that we see at the fertility clinic, fertility clinic equally often is due to male problems as female problems. So you need to be aware of this. And if you choose to be a teenager until you're in your mid-40s, <laughs> then you can't have children and neither can your wife when you wake up. In a few days from now, it's Father's Day. Wouldn't it be an amazing opportunity for fathers to tell their sons how important it was to become a father? And how important it is that they prepare to take the decision for their own lives? And then all mothers, you can do it on Mother's Day. Tell your daughters. Imagine if we could turn Father's Day and Mother's Day into something important. And if we look at the biology of our daughters, this is what we call the, worst, the world's most depressing curve. You have age of the woman, and you have a chance that you become pregnant and have a child per menstrual cycle. It tells us a number of things. It tells us when we are most fertile in life, there's a 34% chance of becoming pregnant. That means that you will be pregnant in one out of three cycles if you try when you're most fertile in your early 20s. It also means that you will not become pregnant in two out of three cycles. And then when do we choose to have our first baby? In this country and in many other countries, it's when we're around 30. You can say that we have lost 50% of our biology. You could also say that you need to spend twice the time to have a baby. And then some want baby, not want child number two and child number three. And that's going to be difficult for some of us. So, ladies and gentlemen in this room, when will you suggest that your children start their family? How many of you have heard or said the sentence, finish your education before you have children? How many of you have heard this or said it? That's a lot of us. Maybe that's not the right advice to give our children. In a scenario where it's our biology that dictates when we can have children. And our biology doesn't care if you want long or short educations, or if you want to have sabbaticals, or if you can't find a partner, or if you need to get a very important job first. It just takes on. A young woman I talked to recently put it this way, it is really irritating that our biology haven't adapted to the way we live today. So therefore, the good news is that we can do something. The bad news is that we have to do it ourselves. Nobody can fix it for us. So we start to talk about fertility awareness. Fertility awareness in the sense that we need to know. You need to know your biology. And you need to know the biology of your partner. Because it takes two to have children. And without knowledge, you cannot take wise decisions for your own life. 
And parents, you need to know the biology of your children. Because otherwise, you're going to advise them the wrong way. But there's more than that. We also need to talk about what we call reproductive sustainability. We need, as societies, to know and to care and to prioritize the ability to have children. We need to have politicians and legislators and workplaces and employers that acknowledge this. The children born today is future generations. And we are very happy that they will work in our factories and in our universities and in our schools and policemen in 20, 25 years and now, from now. But that starts with us being supportive right now. So, ladies and gentlemen, Human being being human in many ways, or in some ways, it's about going back to being human. And it's important because having children is the most important thing in life. Thank you.